If you haven't done so yet, please make sure that you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Before we answer the question, we can just explain this drawing. We've drawn a large sphere that has a uniformly distributed charge located on it, and then we have marked off a smaller region within the sphere whose radius is about half of the radius of the larger sphere itself. And our job is to figure out how much charge is actually contained within this smaller sphere, the one whose radius is marked lowercase r. Now to do that, we can set up a proportion because we know that the charge is uniformly distributed. So for instance, we can say that the charge that is contained within the sphere whose radius is r divided by the total charge, which would be the charge contained within the sphere whose radius is uppercase r, would equal the volume of the sphere whose radius is lowercase r divided by the volume of the sphere whose radius is uppercase r. We can set up this proportion because the charge is uniformly distributed and that means that the amount of charge would be proportional to the volume of the sphere. Now of course the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times its radius cubed. And so that means we can come up and make a substitution for what we called v sub r. We can replace that with the actual expression for the volume of that sphere whose radius was lowercase r. So we'll have 4 over 3 times pi times lowercase r cubed. And then a similar idea over here. We can replace the volume of the sphere whose radius was uppercase r with the formula for that volume, which will be 4 thirds pi times uppercase r cubed. Now, of course, the 4 thirds pi's are going to cancel out. And what we can next do is remind ourselves from the given information that lowercase r was equal to r divided by 2. So we can actually come in here and replace lowercase r with that value, capital R divided by 2. Note that it is being cubed, so we have to make sure that we cube that entire quantity. Why don't we actually simplify the numerator up here. So you're going to cube the uppercase R to make R cubed, and then cube the 2 to make 8. And this is still all divided by uppercase R cubed. And then we can simplify the right-hand side further. We're basically taking a fraction and dividing it by another fraction, if we put a 1 over there. And we know that when we divide fractions, we do something called keep, change, flip. So we're going to keep the first fraction the same. We'll change the division to multiplication, and then we'll flip the second fraction around to make 1 over r cubed. We can see there that the r cubes will cancel out, leaving us with 1 eighth. So this means that if we took the amount of charge in the smaller sphere and divided it by the amount of charge in the overall large sphere, we would get 1 eighth. And this turns out to be the correct answer to part A because the left-hand side of this equation is indeed the fraction of the charge that is contained within the smaller sphere. Now on to part B. In order to determine the ratio of the electric field magnitude at this point, compared to that on the actual surface of the sphere, which would be this point, we would have to use the equation for the electric field that is present at a distance equal to the radius of a spherical distribution of charge. So as long as our spherical distribution of charge has an electric field right at the outer tip of that sphere, so at the radial length, then we can use this equation to calculate the electric field at that point. So for the electric field at the surface of the smaller sphere, we can set up E sub lowercase r, and that's going to equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon, multiplied by the amount of charge enclosed by the smaller sphere, which we determined in part a to be 1 eighth times the total charge, over the radius of the smaller sphere squared. Now the smaller sphere had a radius of uppercase r over 2 squared. We can go ahead and actually square that out to make it r squared over 4. And then we'll set up a similar electric field for the larger sphere. And we'll end up dividing them to set up a proportion. So we have 1 
over 4 pi epsilon. And then the amount of charge on the larger sphere was uppercase Q, and the radius of the larger sphere was uppercase R, and then don't forget to square it. We can cancel out the 1 over 4 pi epsilons as well as the Qs. Let's make sure we leave a 1 in the numerator here. And then we have a rather complex fraction. Let's evaluate the fraction that's in the black color here. So we're going to use keep change flip. So we'll come down here. We would have 1 eighth multiplied by 4 over r squared. And that would reduce to 1 over 2 r squared. So here we're going to have that black colored fraction. And then for the blue colored fraction, we just have 1 over r squared. Now if we do keep change flip again, we're going, we're going to have 1 over 2 r squared multiplied by r squared over 1. And we can see the r squareds will, will cancel out and that's going to leave us with an answer of 1 over 2. And that will be the correct answer for part B.